Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. So, the folks at Quad Spinner, creators of Gaia, have just recently released Gaia 2.2. And for those who have no idea, Gaia is an interesting tool that allows anyone to start creating terrains easily. And this works procedurally, which makes it super easy for you to dial up and dial down any kind of creation that you're making. So, from terrains to simulation, all the way to dealing with textures and all that stuff, Gaia has you covered. And version 2.2 comes with some interesting updates that deals with additional nodes. And these nodes deal with the bulb remover, distress, glaciers, shapes, Creeds, heal, shrubs, and so on. There's also 20 plus improvements to existing node and a hundred bug fixes and stability update now ships with this one. Something that is also pretty interesting with this new update is version 2.2 now comes with a good number of templates which you can simply use and start working with it. So for those who like to take a look at this, you can simply come over to the link in the description where you'll be able to download this totally for free. So there's a community version that you can get. This is totally free. You can simply go ahead and use it it is a non-commercial license but it gives you a head start to knowing how this tool works and of course you can go through and work with it however you want and for those that might be wondering does this have a plugin or so yes there is an unreal engine plugin and also a houdini plugin so for the unreal engine plugin it is quite interesting to note that recently the made the plugin open source and you can simply go ahead and pick it up and work with it with unreal engine and for those working with unreal engine 5.6 you would notice that there is a very cool update that is now available for 5.6 so you can come through download this and of course you can go ahead and download it. so once you download and install it this is where you'll be getting we can go ahead and turn on gpu because we'd like to use gpu to do pretty cool stuff and we're going to simply select industry standard for the navigation keys so basically once you select industry standard it is the alt key stop so you've got alt key with your left mouse button to rotate alt key with your right mouse button to zoom in and out alt key with your middle mouse button to pan and right here is where you build your nodes building nodes on this stuff is literally easy so you want to build mountains all you need to do is just throw in the mountain node and it does it so it is literally that simple you want to scale this mountain up you can go ahead and do that maybe you like to increase the height maybe you like to drop the scale down you can literally go in and do all of that stuff maybe we'll like to add a river so if you like to add a river to this all you need to do is type in that word river and you've got a river right there so you can also come through and increase the depth of the river you can also increase the down cutting maybe you like to increase the width of the river you can go in and do all that. What if you don't want a river, maybe you want a sea? You can of course do that as well. So I'm just gonna type C and we can throw in a C. And you know, because this is fully procedural, it means that you can, you know, switch back and forth and get the desired result that you're going for. We can also, you know, crank in that level if we'd like the C to be a bit much. We can do that for the shoreline. We can also, you know, make that down. We can increase the shore weight, of course. We can also play with the variation of the shore we can turn on or turn off the coastal erosion so you've got that too and you know mountains are not the only thing that you've got here there is a ton of things so maybe you want a crater you can also add a crater right there and automatically we now have a crater in the middle of our mountain maybe you like to add ridges or steps you can of course go in and add in those steps right there and you can merge things together so right here we've got what it looks like this and right here we've got what it looks like so if we like to merge things together all we need to do is get the output of this and the output of this and once we put them together and let go we now have a merge so in this case we are now creating stuff and you know because this is fully procedural we can actually go in and scale things up and also increase the density we can also choose to play with the seeding if this is also what we're going for within the merge node you can go through the ratio maybe you like one to be more dominant than the other you can also proceed to do all that so this is literally very simple and for those that might be asking what about scattering can you scatter things yes you can so you can scatter a ton of things say maybe you like to just scatter so we can just type in the word scatter and most of the things that we can scatter just pops up things like stones so we can scatter all that and you can see that we've got stones like so we can play with the density of course we can drop that down we can increase that and do all of this what about texture texture is also pretty cool so we can also go in and do a simple texture so i can come in here and we can throw in a texture base which is really nice so this is going to be a simple texture base so we can have that we can crank this up if that is what we want we can also increase the flow 
of how we want things to be, especially for the texture. And from here, we can also go ahead and get out the satellite map. So this uses satellite maps to texture. And that is also good. So within the satellite map section, we can play with the biases. We can also go through all of these other uh, presets that are here. So we can drag this out. Some people like to get some greenery around. We can have that there and, you know, we can just go back and forth. If we like to split things in and out, however we want, we can do all of that. And by default, this just lets you start creating pretty cool stuff easily. So for those who will be thinking about lighting, you can definitely change the lighting condition however you want from here, and you can see things a bit more better. Now, this is barely scratching the surface of things that you can do with it. And if you'd like to see even more stuff that you can do, you can definitely open up the examples. And from here, you would find a ton of examples. I think they've added up to 60 interesting examples here. So that also looks cool. I didn't mention, you can also throw in things like snow and you know trees. And, and all that stuff. So yeah, so you've got these ones as well. So if we like to throw trees in there, we can just simply throw trees and we're going to have trees scattered all around our model. So this is looking pretty, pretty, pretty good. So there's a ton of examples that exist which you can use to learn how to create stuff with Gaia. Now with that out of the way, let's talk about a few more things I think you guys need to know. So we've talked about the idea that you can simply press your tab key right here and get a simple mountain. Now there's a mountain of things that you can still do with this one, which includes loading in a simple object from wherever. So we can just go ahead and type in object. And if you already have a 3D model that you like to use to sort of create an idea of what you want your terrain to look like, or maybe create the shape of the terrain, you can load that in. So in this case, we already have Suzanne from Blender. I'm just gonna go in and load that here and you can see what we have. So you can go ahead and make some changes. Let's say you like to reduce the offset. You want to bring that down or, you know, you want to make changes like this. You can, of course, go ahead and do that. However, I would like to say that there is a transform tool that you can also use. So you can throw in that transform tool, click right here. You've got yourself a nice gizmo, which you can move around. And that is, that is pretty cool. Another tool or another thing I think you guys may need to know about is within the terrain section, there is a bunch of textures that you can work with. So these textures include things like the Veroni texture. So that is a, a very nice one. So you can load in a Veroni texture like so, and then you have yourself a Veroni texture. You can mix stuff with it. There is also textures like the Gabo texture as well. So we can throw in a, a Gabo so we can just throw in a simple gabble texture like so. And you can also see that right there. I uh, can go in, just get rid of that, have the gabble texture selected so you can see what this looks like. So we can mix these things up and create interesting looking stuff with them. Of course, there is also the whole direction, depending on how you like things to work, you can mix that up as well with it. There are some nice stuff that you can also do, like throwing in erosions here and there. You can do that. So, like maybe throwing in a, a simple crack I guess we can do that as well. Yeah, so we can throw in cracks in there and you can have these cracks all around. So again, mixing these things up is something that is super possible. So we can have that going and we can also just go ahead, have this selected and play, for example, with the Z axis and just sort of bring that a little bit lower and have this, you know, have this sort of thing going for us. At the same time, because you're using the transform node, you can also go ahead and scale things in, move things around. All of these are super possible. Of course, just looking at the nodes might be a bit intimidating, but if you go in and start playing with these things, you will definitely find them super, super interesting to work with. And maybe, for example, you would like to get a, a low poly version of this. Of course you can. So you can get things like, I think the origami. So I think there is uh, a node like that. Yeah, so we can throw in a node like this, use that to get, you know, some very low poly styled stuff. Again, this is totally depending on the kind of style that you're going for. So we can use this to get some style like that. At this point, you want to throw in a texture. You can go ahead and throw in a simple, you know, texture base if this is what you want. And you can, of course, go in and get a sat satellite map. And I think this is also super possible. Yes, it's also super possible for you to get coordinates and use that to drive how you would want 
your creations to look like. Now, there is an interesting tool that can also allow you to create stuff exactly how you want them, and that is the Draw tool. So with the Draw tool, all you need to do is just drop that there, click on the Open Painter, and that's it. So the more you paint, the more you create your terrain. So you can literally just go ahead and create your terrain based of how you're painting or how you want this to be. So you can increase the hardness, increase you know the height. I can drop that a little bit lower, and with you know we just get a little bit of lower stuff so you can paint your terrains how you want them to be and once we're ready we can go ahead and close that off we can throw in a transform node to just move that to a side you possibly want to have a lake okay so we can go in and throw in a simple lake possibly you like to throw in a crater so we can blend them together so we can have a crater field like so and just blend this together and of course this is just going to be on this side so you know we can we can do cool stuff with this maybe we'll like to raise this a little bit higher maybe we'll like the whole you know lake thing to also come into play so there is a an endless level of possibilities with something like this again depending on what you're trying to make you've got a ton of things that you can explore with and create nice and amazing stuff. Now, speaking about things that this offers to creators, it is also worth mentioning that the community version currently only allows you export stuff to Unreal Engine. So just in case you're thinking about exporting stuff to Unreal Engine, this is also pretty, you know, it's pretty simple. So how you get things going is as easy as going over to the GitHub where you can download Unreal Engine plugin and if you have no idea how to install Unreal Engine plugin, I'm going to put a link in the description that can explain how you can do that. Now, once you install the Unreal Engine plugin, you need to go ahead and fire up Unreal Engine and then turn on that plugin. In this case, we're using Unreal Engine 5.5. So once you turn on the plugin, restart Unreal Engine, and you now notice they've got a tiny Gaia sign right here. So from there is where you'll be able to import your terrains. So how you can now export those terrains from here is by simply relying on a simple Unreal Engine node. Now for us to be able to export stuff, let's just quickly go ahead and create something. You know, get all that good old setup there and, you know, play with these things, get something that we want. From there, we are also going to go ahead and add an Unreal Engine node. So I'm just going to add an Unreal Engine node after we have just created the last primitive, in this case, that's a canyon, because every other thing would actually act more like a texture on top of it. I don't know if that makes sense. And after that, I'm also going to add another node after the sat map. So that would be able to export the texture while the other one will export the geometry. So once you have that ready, you need to go over to where you've got the build and then you can now proceed to build your stuff. Now, while you're building, you can simply keep things the way they are. In this case, we'd like to have a 1K map. So target size is going to be 1009 by 1009. And from there, we will also go ahead, leave things the way they are and execute the build. And so once you execute the build, this is going to go ahead and build the stuff in the directory that you specified. And once you've got that going, you can now go into Unreal Engine, click on the Gear Landscape Importer button. And once the dialog box appears, you need to click on Import Height Map. And this is going to open up your directory and you can simply go through search up for the builds within the directory that you actually saved the height map and select the specified height map and import it and automatically this is going to load into unreal engine and so this is how easy it is for you to just simply go from you know toggling with some interesting nodes to creating very cool looking landscapes so for texture you can simply go ahead and check out how to work with the texture that's also pretty easy and you can also go ahead and check out how you can get started with some of the cool tools and cool nodes that are currently available with this particular release so this is it for those who like to you know throw in things like debris and stuff maybe you like to work with the glaciers maybe you like to work with some of the extra nodes that are now available because there are some very interesting notes that are now here, you can go through and check out the release blog and see all of these things for yourself. Additionally, this is currently having two bridges, like we mentioned earlier, which is that for Houdini and also Unreal Engine. Unity, Blender, 3D Studio Max, and of course Cinema 4D might be coming later in the future. So this is it. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, Peace.